Andrew, I think you should probably kick off um, to uh, my, my first question is a very broad one, but how is Discovery Sports strategy adapting with the launch of what we've just seen, Discovery Plus? And crucially, how will Eurosport be integrated into that platform as well? Uh, good morning, Ed. Thank you. Um, nice to be with you, Jake. Uh, you. Look, Discovery Plus, probably the starting point is to talk a little bit about Discovery Plus hmm. and what it is. Um, you know, for a company that has 10 billion in revenues, this has been described as probably the single most important um, event in the company's history, launching Discovery Plus. Um, it's no secret to probably any of the people who joined about the, you know, the, the transition that the industry is going through from, you know, li linear to digital and trying to find the future of broadcasting. And Discovery finds itself in a very similar position to everyone else, which is, you know, how do we make that transition? And the launch of Discovery Plus for, for us is a massive turning point in the company where we, we are effectively taking not only all the content that we produce, and Discovery is a, is a fantastic content business, not, taking all, not only taking all the content that we produce and putting it in one place, but also for the first time investing in a significant volume of incremental and exclusive original content that you can only find on Discovery Plus. And so what, what has previously been probably a bit of a go service, meaning, you know, a, a watch everywhere type um, product, D Discovery Plus is very different because the content offering um, that's going to be available on Discovery Plus is going to be quite unique and something that you can't find anywhere else. So I think, you know, for us, putting all that content into one place is a really simple strategy. I think, you know, the best strategies are often the most simple strategies um, and the investment in kind of incremental um, original content that you can only find on Discovery Plus means it's differentiated as well from the content that we've produced in the past. So a re really exciting project for the business and, and a really important part of the business's future. And if you've kept an eye on our stock price, you'll see the, the reception from the market has been exceptionally positive um, with the view of the analysts being that this is a really important move for Discovery. Mm. One, one of the things that we've learned, I think, just in terms of this space has been, you know, creating scale is the challenge at the moment for digital services. We've seen a lot of digital services be successful at creating sort of niche scale, um, mm. but, but creating large scale, only a few have really been successful in creating scale. And we've tried a number of different things in sport with a sports only kind of pure play service, and they've been really positive. The, the engagement's been exceptional, but creating scale has been tough. And the role of sport on Discovery Plus is to help create scale. I mean, our, our number one priority is creating scale and putting the, the broadest offering of content on a single product for us is a really important strategy. And this sport on Discovery Plus, obviously, you mentioned about the, the new content you'll be getting. We'll come to that in a minute. But the Eurosport content, will you, as a Discovery Plus subscriber, how will you access the sports content? And is it going to be basically the same as what you'll be putting out on Eurosport, but in a sort of slightly different way of accessing it? Yeah, we're going to do, we're going to do exactly the same as we're going to do for the rest of the products. So there'll be, there'll be loads of great content on Discovery Plus that you can find on Eurosport. So all the Eurosport content, exactly what you uh, very kindly introduced us with, all the great you know, cycling that we're known for, the winter sports, the motor sports, um, the tennis, you know, we're, we're known as the destination for a number of really critical pillars. The Olympics is an important part of who we are now. So all these things will be absolutely available on Discovery Plus, but our ambition is to do a lot more with that content now. Invest both in incremental sports rights, so sports rights that wouldn't otherwise sit on Eurosport will soon be available only on Discovery Plus, but, but also quite excitingly for us, is to do more and different kinds of content that we would otherwise do on Eurosport. And, you know, Scott can certainly talk a little bit more about that. But the, the, the non-live content, the original content, the documentaries, the behind the scenes, the in-depth, you know, personalities, the politics, the money, the sponsorships, the, the, the things that go around sport that make sport really interesting for everyone. I think it gives us, Discovery Plus gives us an opportunity to do more with what we've got 
because we've got now a much broader audience on a platform than mm. just what we have on Eurosport, which is you know 230 million homes, but we've got 230 million homes of hardcore sports fans. And the Discovery mm. Plus product is much broader than just hardcore sports fans. And that gives us the opportunity to do a lot more with our content. And what sort of additional sports rights will you be looking to engage our audience with? Well, it's, it's, it's interesting because as we've been, we've, you know, we've had a bit of thinking time during COVID, you'll be surprised yeah. here, um, which we've used, I hope, quite effectively to start thinking about a right strategy which is a little bit differentiated from the right strategy that we have for Eurosport. If I think about Eurosport as being, you know, a linear channel, the things that make a linear channel work, the things that are important to our affiliate partners, the things that, you know, that bring people onto a pay TV platform for a 12 or 24 month subscription is a little bit different to the kind of content and rights that you'd want to invest in for a digital first kind of content platform. So it's actually a little bit different in terms of the way we're thinking about our right strategy for Discovery Plus. Um, and you know, for, for us, it'll probably be a much more market by market approach. Whereas for Eurosport, we've always kind of thought pan pan-European, uh, I think for Discovery Plus, we'll be thinking much more bespoke on a market-by-market -market basis. Okay, interesting. And um, from the point of view of what happens to Eurosport, once this transition into Discovery Plus takes place, what, what's the strategy for your linear channels? What's the strategy for things like Eurosport player? I, I think, well, for the linear channels, I, I see Eurosport continuing to be a pr premium linear distribution channel, right? Um, I don't see that changing. I think, you know, there is a certain group of um, viewers that like to get their mm. cable subscription to watch Eurosport, to watch all the content that we offer. And I don't see that changing for a very long time. So I think there is an ongoing role for, for Eurosport across Europe and in all the, all the markets that we're in. In, in terms of Eurosport player, we're, we're actually taking that product and folding it into Discovery Plus. So if right. you're a Eurosport player subscriber, you will get access to the Discovery Plus product as part of that subscription and will slowly transition those users onto the Discovery Plus platform and make sure that they get the benefit of the entire portfolio of what we've got on Discovery Plus in addition to what they've come on board for, which is the sports content. Hmm. And before we move on to Scott, as a Discovery Plus subscriber now, presumably there'll be an additional fee to pay well, uh, to get all this additional content. Do you know the kind of models of what subscriptions there might be as yet? Yeah, look, we, we, we and again, be, because every market is different, we're taking that on a market by market basis, but inevitably the product will probably have two tiers. It'll have a, a basic tier of entertainment and content that is the discovery portfolio of content and those discovery originals that I talked about earlier. And then there'll be a, probably an incremental tier of some description um, if you'd like to buy and access the sports content that sits on that platform. Um, every, every market's going to be slightly different, Jake, just because of different dynamics. You know, our content portfolio for discovery, we've got 20 and 30 percent viewer share in the Nordics. So our portfolio of discovery content is very different in, the, in that market versus Spain, where our portfolio of viewership is very different for discovery. And our rights portfolio in, in some markets is very different. So it will mm. have to be taken on a market by market basis, depending on the discovery plus audience, the, the core non-sport non audience and the sports audience, the overlap between those audiences and the quality of content that we have in each of those markets. And, and that, that will then you know, flow through to pricing. Yeah. Okay. And and actually, one more question: when, when, What's the timeline for this to you know get this Eurosport and the additional sport content onto Discovery Plus? So the first the first um, bat, batch of markets. So you know the four Nordic main Nordic markets of you know Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark, um, the Netherlands, uh, the the UK, and Italy uh, are all being earmarked in the next couple of months to transition on. And between now and the rest of the year, we hope all the main kind of ten European markets in which we operate will all be a Discovery Plus single product experience. And then for the what I call the other markets in Europe, the bit of a longer tail of markets for us, then that'll probably happen in Q1 2022. 
Great, thanks, Andrew. Um, right, Scott, <laughs> sorry to uh, make you wait for so long. Um, you're looking after all the production side of things, and you know, prior to the launch of Discovery Plus, Eurosport was already doing a, a lot to enable remote and sort of distributed cloud-based production to happen. Um, and last year was obviously a challenging year, but I think you escalated that kind of uh, remote offering as well. Um, I'm struggling to remember, oh yeah, Eurosport Technology Transformation Project was kind of one of those kind of terms that has been batted around a little bit to explain that. But also um, there's things like the Eurosport Cube where you've kind of innovated in terms of bringing athletes and presenters together that aren't necessarily physically together into the same environment. Um, how is all of the kind of content that Andrew's talked about for Discovery Plus, including the Olympics as well, how is that kind of need to create and produce all that content going to impact on what your sort of bit of Eurosport uh, is and does? Uh, good morning, Jake. Um, that's a fascinating and very broad question, and I hope the answer is massively. Um, because, I mean, the, the conversations that Andrew and I first had about joining Eurosport um, was obviously some months ago. I joined in September. The transition that the company has gone through just in that small amount of time um, is extraordinary. And the launch of Discovery Plus is one of the most exciting things that's happened to our content team because um, it's enabled teams that have focused heavily on our live products and how they support our live products and how they work with our, our top talent in supporting those live products can now expand vastly into alternate streams, as Andrew touched on, um, mm -hmm. but also the ability to create non-live content that's engaging. So evergreen content that comes from our live rights and the vast live rights of tennis, uh, around cycling, around Olympics, around winter sports and motorsport that Andrew touched on again. You know, these are all great stories that traditionally fall out as a start and finish of a live event. Mm. But then Discovery Plus allows us a platform where we can start working with the teams and the individuals and the federations on how we explore the stories. I mean, sport is such an engaging form of entertainment. Um, but the key point is it is entertainment and it sits alongside our other entertainment platforms on Discovery Plus as a great supporting mechanism to why you would want to join. So I think the, the, the Eurosport offering will, will always be there and, and whether it's on Eurosport or Discovery Plus, it will still be managed and supported by the content teams that we have across the UK and the continent of Europe. Hmm. Uh, and there, you know, when we're having lots of conversations at the moment as a team on what this opportunity provides for those love telling stories, um, and it's a really engaging conversation to have with the team. You know, we've got an inspired group of people who love making content and love engaging with sport. So this is just another layer to say that there's not just a couple of outlets anymore. You know, there's not just our, our primary feeds, what we call our pan feeds across Europe or the localised feeds in those markets, but now numerous feeds so that, that we can access through the Discovery Plus platform. So if you're a sports fan um, and you're a true sports fanatic, great news. And would you be... I think just, just, just on that, Jake, if I can, just real quick. Yeah. What, one of the things that we... You know, we, when we talk to rights holders about th their objective, one of the things that we always hear is, you know, how can you, as a broadcaster, help broaden our audience to new, to new people, new people who we can bring in, and and you know, if, if the Australian Open is coming up, it's one of our flagship events, and you know, the, the Australian Open is really ambitious to be able to bring in new, 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 new fans, and there are a bunch of fans out there who m may not pay for a you know sports only platform right just not enough i'm not enough of a sports fan you know i'm not enough hardcore sports fan to play for 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 a euro sport only platform but actually um i, I love i love cooking i love travel uh, i love you know sustainability and i care about the environment um I, I love the entertainment platforms that this and if we put all that together actually what we can do now for the australian open is actually create content that actually creates the interest groups that sit just outside or on the fringe of that mm. hardcore sports audience and we can actually start to bring them back in. Mm. Because the Australian Open say to us, you know what, food is a really important part of what we've got here at the Aussie Open. And we've got one of the biggest food networks on the planet with people who love food. How do we create food content now that actually we can start to share with people who might not be sports fans at their core, but you start mm. to pull those people, those co cohorts of users together. 
And that's yeah. great, that, you know, they're the kind of opportunities Scott you know, and I are talking about where you can start getting really creative mm. about the stuff that you can do that's not just about the live. And, and that's, that's really exciting for us. Yeah, it's nice joined up thinking. It gives you a bit of a USP as well, doesn't it, over other broadcasters and production outlets that uh, doing documentaries around sport tend to be traditionally, you know, interviews with players or ex-players talk about a specific moment in sport that was achieved, whatever, you know. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's some great documentaries, all the kind of fly-on-the-wall ones. But actually what you're talking about is cross-referencing the content that's on Discovery anyway with your sports stuff and trying to create a sort of new, not new genres as such, but new opportunities for, as you say, right. people to step into the sports bit. I, I think that, well, that, that makes us unique. And I think the other thing that makes us unique, which we're really excited about is, you know, going from broad linear distribution to digital only distribution as a rights holder is a really tough decision because the distribution of, you know, pure play OTT only platforms, even, even powerful ones like Amazon, right? That the audience um, change in terms of going from a broadly distributed platform even to an Amazon Prime is significant. And what the benefit that we bring is actually we can we can help rights holders manage that transition because we can mm. window some content on our linear platform, still give broad broad coverage to that content, but still create you know exclusivity and interest and better content for our digital platforms that starts to help that audience understand, you know, what they used to enjoy here as starting to move over here without just going cold turkey, quite frankly, going mm. broadly, you know, 240 million homes to, you know, only Amazon Prime subscribers. That's that that's a that's a big change for a rights holder. And I think the other the other part that's unique for us is we, we can still window you actually on a broad number of platforms to so you don't have to go cold turkey when it comes to that change. Mm, fantastic. Um, looking at the time, uh, amazingly, we've finished uh, session uh, time that we've got here. Um, so, um, and I've just looked, and apparently there's some issues with chat function. So I'm not sure if you wanted to ask any questions. I mean, I haven't been able to get to any of those questions. So many apologies if you've tried. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed what has been a brilliant, enlightening conversation, I think, with Andrew and Scott. Um, Andrew's very open about what's happening here with Discovery Plus. I think, you know, that was a, a really good explanation of the strategy. And from my point of view, I've learned loads, so I'm sure you have too. Um, many thanks, um, both of you, for taking part in this. Um, that was really great. And, and good luck as well with, with all of these changes. I'm sure they'll go well. But, uh, yeah, that's a, yeah, exciting future for you both. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Take care. Right. See you, Thanks, Joe.